Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel tonight. I'm going to tell you how to or teach you how to fly your ship. This is not about combat. I'm not good at combat and I'm not really qualified to teach you how to fly combat ships. However, this does apply to combat ships also, um, but not. we're not getting into like how to fight, how to turn gravity on and off and how to turn your thr different thrusters. We're, we're just going to basic flying and navigation. That's what we're covering tonight. Uh, you can see I have a base uh, starter ship here. This is the Aurora MR, and it is a very small ship with a very little bit of cargo. Um, once again, if you didn't watch my last video, a, a little hint. The openings to any ship are displayed with dots. You can see there it says hatch 7 meter, hatch 9 meter. Those are the doors that are open, and we can enter from either of those points. Uh, cargo bays that can be dropped or vehicle bays, that kind of stuff, those have dots also. Most ships have those in your viewer. When you come up to them, it'll show you where to press to open the ship. You can see here I can have three choices. I can either open the ladder, open the door, or enter the ship. We want to go in, so we're going to click Enter Ship. Now, word of warning. If you leave your doors open or your ladders open when you're in somewhere where someone can steal your ship, I can guarantee you they will. <laughs> so now, if this was a fighter, you'd already be in the cockpit. Um, this ship is not a fighter. It can fight, but it's not a fighter. So we are in the what's considered the HAB area, which is really small on this ship. There's not much room for anything. Back there, we have a bed that we can get into and sleep if we need to. Wow, what a, that is tight quarters back there. And then we have the pilot seat. So let's go ahead and we're gonna hold the, we're gonna look at the back of the seat and we're gonna hold F. So I look at the seat and I press the F key. And if I'm, if I'm far away, it'll just show green and nothing. If I get close enough, well, bluish green. Uh, I then it says enter pilot seat and I click on that and I'm gonna squeeze my way around here and get into the ship. Now, to look around the cockpit, um, I press the Z key. But when I do that, it'll stop controlling the ship. I'm sorry, I press, I'm sorry, you're pre I press the F key, I apologize, not the Z key. And I can look around using my cursor and click on things. But you can see the ship is dead. It has no power, no nothing. Well, what do you do about that? Well, you're going to press your U key. This will fire up all the power in the ship. It turns on the engines, turns on the shields. It's basically the uh, control E of flight sim. It, it turns on the whole ship. And you can give it a couple minutes to warm up. You'll notice on the left-hand side, right here, um, you can see this is the shields are going up. No, not looking at the guy. Well, they're up now. The shields were going up. Now they're up. Um, so what we're going to do is we need to contact this. Uh, we're in we're in New Babbage. We need to contact them to let them know to open the door that we're ready for takeoff. Um, but before we do that, let's talk about a few things. First of all, um, if you ever see this happen, look on the right hand side and you start to fall. That's the I key. You're going to press I to turn the engines on and off. If that happens, you're in trouble. So you got to make sure, unless you're in space. If you're out in space, it's okay. But on surface, when you're flying around, that's trouble. Now, those are two very important gauges there, the ones that are turning red. Hydrogen is what you use when you're in atmosphere. If you run out of hydrogen, you're going to plummet to the earth and die. Um, or you get stuck somewhere. So make sure you, I would say, keep a quarter of a tank at all times. Um, quantanium, that is what you use to jump from planet to planet, moon to moon, station to station. Um, that'll also burn down kind of quickly. I think you can maybe make two or three large jumps with this ship before you have to refill, but you will have to do it at some point. So those are the two important fuel gauges. Once again, hydrogen is for planetary navigation. Quantum is for jumping. Now, or quantanium, I'm sorry. We call it quantum travel, but it's quantanium is the fuel that you use. Uh, in order to fuel your ship back up, let's teach you how to do that. You're going to press the F1 key, and that will bring up your mobile glass. Your mobile glass holds many different things, including your star map, the missions that you're on, um, and a whole bunch of other items. But probably important to us here is the Vehicle Maintenance Services tab. It's the uh, upside-down wrench. 
We're going to click on that. And that will bring us into our menu. Uh, and you have to be at a fuel a space station pad like we are right now or, or a we're in a space port. We're not we're on a planet surface, but also the space station pads do this. And we're full of hydrogen and quantum, so we don't really need it right now. But you can click these and it'll fill them up when they're empty. And then also if you need to repair your ship, you can do that if you're out of missiles and, or if you're using the cannons, you can refill those here. Uh, and we're all set. I clicked repair and repaired the ship, so we're good. Um, but then we can also use this for navigation, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. Uh, but that's important for you to know. That's how you refuel your ship. So the next step is to actually use the radio on our panels um, to contact them to go ahead and open the door, and we'll start navigating. So refresh the list. Sometimes this happens, and right now we don't have the airport on our list. So you're going to go to Menu, pick something like Shields, and go into the Shields controls. Then go back to Menu, and we're going to click the Comms button. There we go. Now we have New Babbage International Spaceport. It's a little bit um, aliased, I know. And we're going to go ahead and click the Communicate button and tell them that we're ready for takeoff. You're ready to launch. There we go. And the gates are opening. There you go. And that poor guy's going to get crushed. So, now, before we do that, there's another way to contact them. If you can't get that to work, you can also press F1 in your mobile glass. And once again, this is a game of bugs. So be aware that you may run into issues when you're doing this. Um, you can also go to Comlink, go to Friends, and you can see here's New Babbage International Spaceport. And you just click this button and it'll they'll go ahead and um, you can go ahead and my brain went blank. <laughs> you can go ahead and communicate with them and let them know that you're ready for takeoff. So there's that. And somebody's targeting me, but that's okay. I don't. They turned it back off again. Uh, all right. So now basic flying. Uh, first thing you uh, first you have the mouse wheel. And you can see here, as I roll my mouse wheel up in the left-hand corner here by the this this velocity gauge, uh, I can roll it up and down, and that sets my cruise control. Uh, I'm not going to use cruise right now, but this also sets the top speed. So if I use my WASD uh, keys to move around, here the top speed is going to be like 120, and it varies on ships. Different ships have different speeds. But the top safe traveling speed is going to be in this vicinity, all right? The more I push it up, the faster the ship goes. But as we get into the red, that means the ship is no longer necessarily in control. And what you're going to end up having is a ship that's going to start sliding, drifting. Uh, if you're heading towards a building and you've got the thing way up here and you try to avoid the building by turning, you probably are just going to end up slamming into the building or space station. So you need to... When you start getting close to objects, you need to cut the speed back down into the blue or in the low red is fine also. Sorry, my wife came in. Uh, all right, so we have, uh, the next thing you're gonna do is the C key turns the cruise control on and off. So you see that little tick at the bottom there where I'm putting the square over. That tick is, that means the cruise control's off. When I press the C key, it's gonna jump up to wherever I've left this square. So basically, this is your, you know how you, you set your cruise control to different speeds? Same deal. You're setting your cruise control where you want the cruise to work. I would navigate low speed in the in the hangars and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Space bar will lift you off, and then the left control key brings you back down again. So once again, there's look how fast we jumped up. That's why you keep this down. If you had it up higher, you would have whacked right into the ceiling. Now we go back down again, and I'm just tapping the control key, and I'm back on the ground. Boop. All right. Uh, and once again, space bar brings us up. And if you want to tap it, you can do that. Or if you want to roll that square all the way down, see that now it's really controlled. And I'm holding the space bar down and I'm slowly lifting off the ground. And then I'm going to press the N key to bring up my landing gear. I don't know why it's not the G key, but it's not. And he's letting me know the landing gear's up. And now with my square down at the bottom, I'm going to press the C key. And I've engaged the cruise control. Now you can see there's a white tick there showing that the cruise control is on. As I roll my mouse up, the ship is going to start to accelerate. And you can see here I am rolling my mouse to control. And then I move my mouse around the screen 
to look to actually turn the ship left and right. Now, if I um, press A, the ship will strafe left. If I press A, or I'm sorry, S or D, the ship will strafe, uh, strafe to the right. So we can strafe, and we can also change direction by looking with the mouse. Now, just so you know, if you find that you, you move the mouse and nothing happens, the Z key disables the mouse, so you may have that pressed. If I press it again, it re-enables it. Also, right shift can disable the mouse and enable it. So be careful. If you notice that you're not being able to turn, try Z key. If that doesn't work, try the uh, right shift key. And I'm going to go ahead and accelerate up. And you can see here I'm rolling the, the wheel all the way up. And the ship's going to start to accelerate, and we are cruising. Now, I'm using track IR, so I'm able to look around the cockpit. For you to look around the cockpit without track IR, you hold the F key and then look with your mouse. But because I have track IR on it, does, that doesn't work the same way. Um, a little bit about things that are on the screen in front of us. We have a blue up arrow. That basically just means we have a neutral or um, maybe friendly party ahead. And they are flying really low along the ice there. You can see them. Um, and moving at a pretty good speed because they're not really catching up to them. So it's really windy. You'll also notice that this, this game does um, model wind a little bit. So you'll notice sometimes the ship starts doing things on its own, and that's because the wind is blowing it. So how do we get out to space? Well, it's pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and face the ship upwards. And we're going to climb the step ladder. And you can see in the middle there's a ladder showing 50, 55, 60, how many degrees we are pointing. And uh, 90 is the maximum, obviously, because that's 90 degrees. So we're going to hold it about 90. And I'm going to go ahead and boost the ship up full speed. And we need to climb up out of the atmosphere before we can use any of the jump system. So we're going to go ahead and keep going up. And I'm going to get back up to 90 degrees. There you go. So now we're flying nice and pretty straight up. You can see the planet down there to our left and right as we leave the atmosphere. It takes about three or four minutes to get up out of the atmosphere. So I'm going to pause for just a second, and I'll be back up when we are far enough out of the atmosphere to use our jump system. Now, you'll notice on the left-hand side, as we get further up out of the atmosphere, my ship begins to accelerate faster and faster. Once we reach top speed, our thrusters are going to turn off, which is really nice because we'll start saving fuel. Right now, we're, you can already see on the hydrogen gauge there, we've burned some fuel as we've left the atmosphere. There we are, we're, we're pretty high up there now. Uh, but you'll notice that as we get higher on to the left of our gauge there, showing our speed, which is in, continually increasing, we're up to 800 whatever, parsecs, miles, whatever. Uh, the throttle here is right there. And as we get out of the atmosphere, this is going to start to drop. Oh, there it goes. That's all by itself. We've reached the top speed of the ship, which is 11 something, 44, 45, 50, something like that. And the thrusters are off because we are now out of gravity and the ship is just floating. Um, if I change direction, you'll notice that the ship starts to increase the throttle because it's using the, the engines to navigate. So here's a tip. If you get to a planet and you have a mission that happens to be somewhere where you can't jump to, uh, just a little heads up, you can fly at an increased altitude above the planet. And you're going to get up high enough. We're still not high enough, it looks like. Maybe if we even out, it will kind of level out the throttle. There we go. If you need to get there and you need to get there fast, go up out of the atmosphere and fly straight across the planet, but you stay up out of the atmosphere. And in doing so, you'll start to save fuel because you can see here, we're cruising along the planet at, oh, 1150, right? But I'm not using any fuel because I'm out. Don't fly through the atmosphere down by the planet because that takes up way more fuel and you can't fly at these high speeds down there. The, the air will slow you down, friction slows you down keeps you from reaching your top speed. So this is a nice trick to save on fuel and to go longer, much longer distances without having to refuel um, your hydrogen, that is. Um, but you can see here, just coming out of the atmosphere, used almost an eighth of a tank. So there's a white target that's a neutral. If you see a red arrow like that and you get a, a target warning, 
Be ready to hit your J and K keys. That drops flares. And uh, I'm sorry, not your K key. Uh, it's H, I think. Yeah. So uh, J drops your noise and um, H drops your decoys. If you see a missile warning, like incoming missile, you're going to start using those buttons. You don't slam them because you don't want to lose all of them, but drop one or two uh, decoys and the missiles usually will chase after the decoys. But that means that you're going to be going into combat and you can hit the T key to find a target. Good luck. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen to you first time out, but it might. Um, so just be smart. Try to get away from people. Don't stick around or take somebody with you that knows what they're doing. That's another big thing that helps. But anyway, we're cruising along here. Let's go ahead and um, enable our navigation system. So we're going to do that by pressing the F1 key. And I am going to go into our star map, Skyline. That's right here, number four here. You can see it's the little symbol. This is the Skyline symbol. Um, and we are here on Microtech. And I'm going to zoom in. And we're going to jump out to the space station, Micro Microtech L1. Pretty short trip, but it'll show you how to use the system. So here is the, what's the Jericho? Hmm, I'm not familiar. There's some stuff going on there. That must be the, uh, the fleet for the the fleet week we're going to jump to uh, shallow frontier station so let's go ahead and i'm going to click on this and you can see it kind of shows here what we're clicking on and i'm going to say set route and it shows that we have to jump to mike l1 first and then we're going to go there but i'm zooming in and out with the mouse wheel if you need to zoom fast you can double click and i'm not going to go there but that's it so we've got our, our route set i'm going to press f1 to exit and now you can see there, there's a tick showing us that's the, that diamond right there is where we are going to head right in the sun. It's hard to see for you guys, but uh, I'm going to press B now. And this B, clicking it once. Oh, first, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. First things first, we're going to slow down. I'm going to bring the cruise control back down to maybe about there. And that's it. We don't have to decelerate. The ship will decelerate when we come out of jump. But I wanted to, to get that back down so we're under control when we start, when we leave the jump. So I'm going to turn the ship this way, and I'm going to click the B key. This enables the jump engine. You can see the computer there changed. We now have a diamond. And the goal that we have is we need to line up our white diamond in the middle with this diamond. And you can see on the left here it says calibration ready. Now I'm going to look away, and it'll go away again. So watch. If I bring that diamond back and bring these close together, see that white bar on the side there? It's going up. And we're 70%, 80%, 90% ready. We're ready to jump. So let's go ahead and I'm going to to jump. I'm going to hold down the B key. B is in boy. Holding it down. And we're jumping. Now, sometimes it doesn't work. That can be a server issue. Um, just be patient. Hold it down until you go. Uh, if it's not working, turn the system off and turn it back on. But there are bugs sometimes where you press the B key and nothing happens. So... So there you go. So now we are on our way. It's a pretty short jump. It's 4 million kilometers, which should take us another minute or two to get there. Uh, if it's a much longer distance, like some of the, the trips actually take about 20 minutes. Uh, if you have a bigger ship, you can get out. You can go lay down in the bed. You can play around in the... the there's really not a whole lot to do because nothing really works yet. But eventually you'll cook meals. Um, you could, you know, hang out and play something on the, one of the TV screens. They'll probably have games in the, on the... Like there as you wait, as you travel. Um, maybe play a game of pool and some of the bigger ships have pool tables. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's things to do as you travel because you're going to be traveling long distances sometimes. Um, and you can see here now, if you look on the right there, our quantanium fuel is starting to drop. That's because that's what we're burning right now to get here. And we are now one million kilometers away and we're going to start slowing. Seven hundred. So the the MR is kind of the Cessna, if you will, the one seventy two of uh, Star Citizen. I think there's better starter ships out there. This one is a little bit more combat capable, but it's still really light. Um, I personally am really excited about the new Cutter for a, a, a cheap starter ship. I love the Nomad. That's the ship that I chose for my starter ship. Um, I think that's it's the best all around because it has a decent amount of cargo space. But anyway, 
So we've made our first jump, and now you can see here uh, it, the engine has to cool down for a couple seconds, and then we can aim at this second. The second one's a square, which is weird. It's not a diamond, but that's the station that's showing you. Squares are stations. Uh, baseball diamond shapes are uh, planet space stations or cities. And then diamond diamonds are space objects that we fly to. So now we're going to go ahead and head towards the shallow frontier station and we'll go ahead through the docking procedure so this is as close as we can get i'm going to press b to turn the quantum drive off and my cruise control is on so we're already heading towards the station at 199 kilometers per hour I'm, i think it's kilometers is what they measure it in somebody will leave a comment there and let me know um so once we get inside the ring of lights um, that's going to get us close enough to the station that we should be able to communicate. And at that point, we are going to request a landing pad. The first thing that we're going to do, though, is we're going to actually turn this off. Right now, the refresh doesn't work. You can go into your F1 menu to communicate to them once we get close enough, but I just like doing it through here. So I'm going to go to menu. I'm going to go to shields. I'm going to go back to menu, and I'm going to go to comms. Nothing yet. So we're just going to go off on shields. You should also get a message on your screen saying, please contact ATC. Once you get that, you know you're in range. There we go. We're in the armistice zone. We have radio communication, and that means we can't shoot, but we are allowed to communicate. So let's go ahead and... Is it there yet? Nope. Shields, menu, comms. There it is. And we're going to communicate with the station. Please proceed to assign landing bay. And they're going to show us... There's a tick on the screen there with a the down arrow. That is our landing bay. I'm going to hold space bar to get a little bit of height here because we're underneath it. So we're going to raise up. And I'm just going to keep it at this speed. Like my son, he flies in at absolute full speed when he comes in here and just like slams his way into the, into the landing pad. I tend to try to be a little bit more graceful about my landings, but to each their own. Now, once again, I've got the cruise control enabled still. I'm going to disable it here and use my uh, regular inputs to do it. And I'm, I'm um, strafing to the right using the A key. And there's our landing pad. And I'm going to... Oh, Q and E, by the way, are what tilts you. I'm sorry, that, that, that rolls you. So the roll axis is Q and E. Strafe or sort of rudder is your A and D. And I'm, I'm bringing the uh, tick way down to slow down here, and I'm going to press N to lower my landing gear. And now the doors are open, I can speed up my hair. And so we have successfully navigated to a space station, and we're going to land. And we're going to refuel just so you can see that process again. And they'll say, thank you for landing. Now, there's a big bug in the game right now. Hey, thank you. Uh, and to fix that bug, what happens is if you store your ship here and come back, it might be floating in the air. To avoid that happening so that you can't get into your ship, press the I key after you land. That will turn off your engines, and now the ship will not float. So if you... If they mistakenly load it in the wrong position, you can actually just get back in your ship now. You'll just have to remember to press I when you get it back in it. So I'm going to go ahead and exit the ship. And voila, we have arrived at the space station. Mission accomplished. We have successfully navigated to the nearest space station. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that that answers any questions you have about the, the navigation. Once again, pretty simple tutorial, nothing about combat or anything like that. But it at least gets you the ability to travel around the verse successfully um, once again also things to note if you are going on a quantum journey and you have a fighter with a high speed engine that fighter is going to burn through fuel quickly you may have to jump across the verse in jumps so like right now we flew from here to here but if you were going to go from here all the way let's say over to arc 5 or arc corp um, you might have to stop at crul3 to refuel and then continue on. Oh, we didn't refuel. I forgot. <laughs> Let's do that real quick, and then we'll call it a night. Let me get back into the ship. Enter the ship. There we go. Back in my seat. 
the exciting parts. Squeeze in. I think in real life I probably wouldn't be able to get in there. Do you have something for somebody a little bit larger? Uh, all right, so then the last... We're going to go ahead into the menu again, and this time I'm going to go to our vehicle maintenance service. That was F1 to get that open, by the way. You can see here we need to refuel. There's $4 worth of quantum that we need and, well, for UEC, and uh, refuel the hydrogen at um, whatever we can re... I don't want to be restocking. I didn't use... Oh, I fired those flares. So this restocks those flares, 20 AUEC, and we're going to do a little repair to the hull. The hull always takes damage when you travel. That's just how it is. It's cheap to fix, but you do have to do it. You can see here it's processing, processing. Also, if you leave this menu, it'll say in red letters, please don't move. I think we're done. Oh, it's not done fueling. So just we're just going to sit here and, oh, wait, there. Yeah, it's done. It's done. And the engine's off. It doesn't show you how much fuel you have when the engine's off. So that's it. So we have successfully navigated. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully this tutorial you found helpful. It only took 20 minutes to get here. That's not too bad. You can see why this game is a massive time waster. But anyway, have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. And we will see you next time in the verse.